to the stage, the fantastic Brigitte. Brigitte, no, I need glasses now, sorry, no. I am Brigitte. Um, I love transformational leadership. I have an 18-year-old daughter called Luna, and I like to make people laugh. Uh, as a kid, I wanted to become a clown. Uh, so in my childhood, all our neighbors had to applaud me performing the same joke over and over again, <laughs> stumbling over an imaginary uh, step stone on the ground. And um, I think this is when I started to get um, familiar with expecting the unexpected and celebrate my failures. <laughs> uh, as an adult creative leader within GIZ, um, many times I felt like a clown. Um, <laughs> So, uh, my mission during the last 15 years was to bring innovation, inspiration and agility to a very bureaucratic German organization. Um, and uh, seeing my attempts, many people had to laugh. Um, so, um, most of the initi initiatives I brought to GIZ nobody else would have been able to have even think of. And there is a good reason for it. <laughs> and tonight's the night of the confession. <laughs> I'm an alien. <laughs> I come from the moon. I've been sent from outer space to help save the world. Um, we moon aliens have some superpowers that normal German humans don't possess. Um, first of all, I'm able to hypnotize people with stories. So I can tell the same story over and over and over and over again until the most resistant colleagues start being inspired and <laughs> try something new. Second, um, um, I can ask extremely impactful questions. I would question the strategy of my boss so many times that she got really upset. <laughs> and thirdly, I have, of course, you can see that fabulous hair and boots. Um, so people instantly fall in love with uh, me and my hair and my boots <laughs> and will do anything I say, except for my boss. Um, so, uh, because of those superpowers, um, the Moon Development Ag Agency, called the Galactic Interplanetary Zusammenarbeit, um, <laughs> <laughs> decided to install me as a secret agent and the sister agency in Germany, GIZ. And they were feeling like I could make all the difference and um, prevent the Earth from sharing the same destiny as the moon. So here's my story. And I would really appreciate you not leaking any of this information to anybody because I got really in trouble with my galactic agency. Okay? So, safe space here. Um, Chatham House rules. Um, so, yeah, um, here's my story, and uh, it goes like this. I was born 300 million years ago, and I was raised on the moon when it was still called the green planet number one. This Earth is planet number two, green planet number two. Um, and uh, we lived a life, a quite happy life out there, pretty much as you folks here. Um, but then something happened. Um, we started to destroy our planet because our elders didn't listen to that funny young influencer who popped by uh, warning us about, well, that we would be running into a catastrophe. I think you have one of those uh, guys over here. Oh, no, it's a lady. Greta? <laughs> so uh, ours was called the, pity, the, the little prince. <laughs> Remember him, right? 
Yeah. And that little prince was warning us when he saw our huge baobab trees um, that we would really have to cut them down right away, otherwise they would eat up all our resources. Your baobab trees are called big multinationals, by the way. <laughs> um, so the guy had a point. We already knew that we would be in trouble. Uh, so there is no life anymore on the moon, as you all know. And, uh, but our elders were just too scared to listen to the truth of this kid because they were fearing that they might lose their authority with their people. So since then, I'm always admiring leaders who are able to listen to the truth wherever it, whenever it comes from, though, no, wherever it comes from, and act upon it. Um, so I was one of the survivors of the moon tragedy. No, strategy, tragedy, catastrophe. Uh, I was one of the survivors. And um, then we decided to set up a moon uh, planetary academy uh, to share our lessons with other planets. So 15 years ago, we decided that um, the Earth had to go in line with the cosmic development goals. Um, sure, I mean, you're messing around here. Uh, so, uh, the master of the academy was approaching me, asking me if I would like to join the mission to bring the Cosmic Development Goals, the CDG, to the Earth. And I said, oh yes, count me in, without thinking twice. Um, because I wanted to make the, the Earth not only survive, but thrive. Um, so, it was, this trip was really a small step for me, and a big one for the universe. <laughs> Um, yeah, so uh, I was trained in a special leadership program called the Lunatic Hard Warriors for a Better Future. Um, and I was sent to Germany. Unfortunately, it took me so long that Bonn wasn't the German capital anymore when I got here. But anyway, <laughs> I'm here. And um, yeah, so uh, I had to work undercover uh, and to blend into society. Um, I had to get married. Sorry to tell you now, but well, this is why. And I gave birth to a lovely girl in 2001, you. Um, and I named her Luna um, because it made me feel like home. Uh, and I was worried that people could suspect of my true origins. Uh, sure, but you know, they were so enchanted with my hair. <laughs> they didn't suspect anything. Wasn't that cool? Um, yeah, so. Um, how did it get? Oh, I'm so enchanted with my own hair that I don't remember what I wanted to say now. Um, so I was here, and then I felt a little weird about uh, in this role of mother of a human hybrid. Because you're doing so funny stuff here to, to give birth uh, and then onboard your kids uh, in your society. So while well, I did this uh, pregnant yoga thing, uh, breathing exercises, um, I had the little one swimming underwater a couple of weeks after birth. I mean, come on, why would you do that? But yeah, and, and massaging the lovely creature, of course, when she was still yeah, two months old. Um, but after a while, I understood why you're doing this, because this... Uh, awareness and intimate contact really creates trust um, and uh, bonding uh, for you and your people. So I thought, yeah, let's transfer this um, to uh, others in our leadership programs, of course. So I started to transfer all I learned as a mom um, to the planet as a leader with my amazing teams. Yeah. Applause. <laughs> Um, so what we did was uh, we introduced awareness exercises and yoga for the leaders of our earth-saving leadership programs. We took them to monasteries and through archery and art, uh, we created those safe enough spaces so they could step up to their higher self. Um, yeah, and we also established a self-help group um, called the Anonymous Bureaucracy Lovers to heal all the injuries they had suffered over years and years and years. And we also invented several digital leadership massaging styles <laughs> to get them into the mood for the future. Um, yeah, this is what we did. 
so now that my mission has successfully concluded here uh, and I've been reassigned uh, to my next mission, so uh, now I'm going to mainstream your digital development goals up there in the universe as a confluencer. Um, we have a lovely tradition in our academy, remember? We invited you today, so the academy is always singing a song when somebody's leaving uh, for a new mission. So I'd like, um, yeah, to sing you a song now, and you might want to tune in uh, whenever the lyrics are coming magically. Um, I might use my magical um, whatever to. Oh, we, we, we could all think about the lyrics magically appearing. Yes, thank you. <laughs> it worked out. <laughs> so, <clears throat> normally I do this under the shower, so <laughs> it's really challenging. <sighs> Fly me to the moon and let me play among the stars. Let me confluence up there on Jupiter and Mars. In other words, Follow me. In other words, let us all be a we. Fill my heart with song and let me sing forevermore. Peace is all I long for, all I worship and adore. In other words, please be true. In other words, I love you. Thank you, good night.